In this video, I will show you an example of how to track pop-up form submissions with Google Tag Manager and GA4. And we will go even further. I will show you more advanced things that will help you build a report that looks like this. It shows you how many times was the pop-up displayed, how many times was it submitted, and what is the conversion rate of each pop-up. So let's take a look. Here is a demo website. And on this website, a pop-up appears that asks to subscribe to a newsletter. There are various ways how forms, even in pop-ups, work. Some of them might just show the success message. Some of them might redirect visitors to a thank you page. So there are different form tracking methods. In this case, I will be using one of them because if I submit the form, a success message appears on the pop-up right away. So with Google Tag Manager, I could use an element visibility trigger and track when this particular success message appears. Also on this website, I have installed a Google Tag Manager container and inside of it, I have GA4 configuration tag, also known as Google Tag, and it is responsible for firing the GA4 tracking code. However, if we want to track the pop-up form submissions, we will need to send an additional event. So I will go back to the website. I have already submitted the form. Now, if I do the right click and inspect, I will see that this particular success message has an ID. And if I had multiple pop-ups with different forms on my website, those forms would have different IDs. In your case, the success message might not have the ID, so then maybe you will need to use class, but in my case, I have ID. In Google Tag Manager, I can go and create an element visibility trigger. So in triggers, I click new, trigger configuration, then element visibility, and here I can choose the selection method. It's either ID, or CSS selectors. If this pop-up is the only pop-up on the website, then I could just copy this ID right here, paste it here while the selection method is ID, and then this trigger will track only those success messages that belong to this particular form. But let's imagine that the website contains more pop-ups and all of their IDs start with WP forms confirmation, but the number is different. In that case, we would need to go more advanced and select a CSS selector and then write the following selector. So I will be looking for those elements that have the ID which contains, and then it will contain just this part right here. Let me select this right here, and I will copy it here between the quotation marks. So this selector means that we are looking for partial matches in the element ID. If you have never worked with CSS selectors, then I talk more about them in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. Then I will leave this option as it is, which means that the trigger will fire once per page. Then I will select the minimum percent visible, which means that even if a slightest part of the success message appears on the screen, I want to track that. And then since our success message just appears out of nowhere, after the form is submitted, then I will click this checkbox to observe DOM changes. And then let's name this trigger and save it. Now let's test if this is working. So click preview, then enter the URL of the page where that pop-up form is placed and click connect. Now the pop-up has appeared, I will submit the form and here is the success message. If I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I will see the element visibility event and this means that our trigger is configured correctly. So now I could send an event to Google Analytics 4 when the pop-up form is successfully submitted. Together with that event, I could also send an ID which is in the form ID variable. Of course, this applies if your form actually has an ID. It is technically possible that maybe on your website, the form is without an ID. But in my case, I have the ID and also I have enabled the built-in form ID variable. So that was done in the variables section, configure and here I have form variables enabled. So now I can go to tags, click new, tag configuration, Google Analytics and GA4 event. Here I have to enter my measurement ID and that ID is available in admin, data streams, then select website data stream and copy this measurement ID. And here I will paste it and I can name this event, for example, pop-up submitted. And in the event parameters, I can add parameter, which is form ID, because let's say that I want to also send this form ID and let's imagine that there are more pop-ups on the website, so their numbers will differ. So here in the value, I will click the button and insert the form ID variable. Finally, I will click triggering and select my element visibility trigger. Let's name this tag. 
and click Save. Now we are going to test if this is working properly. So click Preview. Here is the website, here is the pop-up, and I will submit the form. If I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, I click Element Visibility. My pop-up submitted event tag fired. And if I go to Admin, then Data Display and Debug View, here I will see my pop-up submitted event. And if I click it, I can also see the form ID. If you want to later use this form ID and see it in your reports, you will need to register it as a custom event scope dimension. Because right now, when I'm recording this video, form ID is not available as a built-in dimension. Maybe in the future, when you're watching this video, that dimension will be available. But right now, we need to go to Admin, then Custom Definitions, Custom Dimensions, click Create Custom Dimension, and then here you should enter Form ID, then leave the scope as Event, and here you should enter Form ID. The reason why I get this error is because I have already registered this custom dimension in the past. So once you do that, click Save, then go to Google Tag Manager, click Submit to publish your changes, and after 24 hours, after your visitors submit that form in the pop-up, you will see that data in your reports. But let's go one step further. Let's track not just when the form is submitted in the pop-up, but also when the pop-up appears. We can do that by creating one more element visibility trigger. So first, when the pop-up appears, I will do the right click, inspect that form. And then here I have the form, which is inside the pop-up. Here is that form. If I hover my mouse, that form is displayed here. And I also see its ID. It is slightly different compared to the success message, but it ends still with the same number which means that this is the actual ID of the form. So I could go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, New, Trigger Configuration, and then select Element Visibility. Let's imagine again that on this website, I have more pop-ups. Their IDs all start with WP Forms, then the word form, but the number is different for each form. So I will copy this, and then here I will write a CSS selector. So I will be looking for all form elements where ID contains this value without a number. So this means that the selector will not care what number is at the end. Then I will set this also to once per page. Then let's say that I want the pop-up to be displayed fully on the screen. And then I will also need to observe DOM changes. Let's name this trigger and click Save. Let's test if this is working. So. I will click Preview. Then I will go to the website. The pop-up appeared, and my element visibility event is visible right here. This was dispatched by this new trigger. And if I submit the form, I will have that second element visibility event. So on this event, if I go to variables, I will see that form ID is this one. At the end, it's 931. That's the actual ID of the form in the back end of the website. And here, it is this one. The beginning is different, but the end is the same, which means that in reality, this is the actual form ID. So to be able to easily link the pop-up display event with pop-up submission event, we need to send the same value of form ID, which means that we need to extract just this number from this ID and then the same number from this ID. And one of the ways how that can be done is with custom JavaScript variable. For this particular case, I have two custom JavaScript codes. You will find the link to this page below the video. And this one will extract the number at the end of the ID if that ID contains this, while the second code will extract the number at the end if that form ID contains this. In your case, you might need to edit the codes because websites can be coded differently. The forms might work differently, so you will need to adapt. But in my case, these codes will be sufficient. So I will go to Google Tag Manager, Variables. And first, you need to make sure that the form ID variable is enabled. It is in the built-in variable section, and you can enable it by clicking this button. Because these codes will be looking at the form ID, and then they will try to extract the number based on this regular expression. After the form ID is enabled, I go to user defined variables, click new, variable configuration and custom JavaScript variable. Let's copy the first code. So after you give it a name, click save. 
and then I will create another custom JavaScript variable, this time with the second code. And this one can be named like this. Click Save. And let's test if these variables are working. So click Preview. Then the pop-up will appear. I will submit the form. And here is the success message. If I go back to the preview mode, I will see two element visibility events. I click the first one, go to variables, and I see that this variable returns just a number. And then on this next element visibility, the other variable returns the correct form ID. Later in this video, you will understand why sending the same form ID with both events is important. Because right now we are sending the pop-up submitted event, but we are also going to send the event when the pop-up is just displayed in the first place. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, then Tags. And first of all, let's update our previously created pop-up submitted event. Instead of the regular form ID variable, we are going to insert the one that is related to the pop-up and not success message. Oh, sorry, I actually mean the success message because this event is related to the success message. So this looks good. Now I need to make a copy of this tag so I can go to the tag, click three dots, copy, and then we can name this, let's say, pop-up displayed like that. I can then copy here change the event name. And then here I need to use the different variable, which is related to just the pop-up, not the success message. And we will also need to change the trigger from pop-up submitted to pop-up displayed. And here is the cool thing that will help us also calculate the click-through rate, or we can call this form submission rate. So with the pop-up display event, we need to send a custom metric. So it could be something like pop-up displayed, for example. And every time the pop-up is displayed, which means that this tag is fired, we will increase that metric by one. If the pop-up is displayed five times, it means this tag will fire five times, and that metric will be increased by five in total. Click Save. And then in the pop-up submitted, we can send another metric. You can call it whatever you want. It can be pop-up submission, for example. It can be pop-up submitted, doesn't matter but just make sure that you are following the naming convention of GA4, which is recommended. And in my case, the parameters name is a lowercase with the underscore. And I will also increase this by one. What's important is that this metrics name must be different than the one that you had in the displayed event. So now let's test if this is working. So click preview. Then I will go to the website, the pop-up appears, and I submit the form in the pop-up. I get two element visibility events. If I click the first one, I see that the tag has fired and we are sending the form ID and we are sending this metric. Then with the second event, I click the tag, I see the same form ID. This is important, their values must be the same. And then I have another metric. Now we need to register these custom metrics in Google Analytics 4. We have pop-up submission and we have pop-up displayed. So let's go to Google Analytics then admin, custom definitions, custom metrics, and create custom metric. First, let's enter the metric which is related to the pop-up display. So I will copy this parameter, and then I will enter it right here. It's very important that it is entered right here exactly as it is in Google Tag Manager. And then the unit of measurement should be standard. Then you can name any metric name that you want. We could call this, let's say, pop-up impressions which means that how many times the pop-up was displayed, and click Save. And then register the second custom metric, which in this case will be the pop-up submission. So I will copy it right here, standard unit of measurement, and then we can call this metric, let's say, pop-up submissions, and click Save. My custom metrics are not displayed here, but maybe if I refresh the page, they will appear. And here they are. For now, the setup is complete. We have to go to Google Tag Manager, click Submit, which means that we will publish the Google Tag Manager container. And then we will need to wait for a while, at least for 24 hours to collect the data. And then later I will show you how to build the report and also how to create that form submission rate metric in the GA4 interface. So for now I will pause the video and I will continue recording when 24 hours have passed. And here I am back after 24 hours. Let's go to Explore, Blank, and then in dimensions, let's add form ID. 
This is a custom dimension that we registered. And then in metrics, let's add both pop-up related custom metrics that we sent, which is pop-up impressions and pop-up submissions. Click import. Now let's double click on all items that we have added to this exploration. And here I can see the ID of the form, how many times was it displayed, and how many times was that form in a pop-up submitted. We can make this report even more useful by creating a calculated metric which will show the pop-up submission rate. Let's go to admin, then custom definitions, calculated metrics, and create calculated metric. Here, let's name this, let's say pop-up submission rate, then in formula, we should enter pop-up submissions divided by pop-up impressions. Keep unit of measurement as standard and click save. Now let's go back to the exploration. I will open it and here I will add one more metric which is pop-up submission rate and click import. Then I will double click it and it will be added to the report. And here I can see the form ID. If I had multiple forms tracked with this property, then each form ID would have a separate row. And here I can see how many times was the form displayed, how many times was it submitted, and what is the percentage. In this case, 0.33 means 33%. And you could take this even further by moving form ID to the columns. And then in the rows, you should add another dimension, which could be, let's say, session source medium. Then each row would show different traffic sources. And then in columns, you would be able to see the pop-up impressions, submissions, and submission rate of each separate form. Of course, if you have a lot of forms, then not all of them will fit into this table, but it's still quite useful to look at least at your most popular forms. Or and Google Tag Manager. This was a good reminder that you should definitely use custom metrics and calculated metrics in GA4. But if you want to learn much more, see even more practical examples, then take a look at my Google Analytics 4 course. I will post a link to it below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tech Manager or GE4, then subscribe to my channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.